Okay, hey everybody, I'm David Scott, I'm the uh, pastor of Family of Hope Church in Saugerties. Um, this is brand new, never done this before, so uh, welcome to the world where we do things we've never done before. It's a lot of fun, I guess, and uh, we will, um, I just want to share a couple things because church is closed this week, this weekend, and um, there's a lot of us that really could use to uh, hear some good words and some encouragement and um, got something that's on my heart that I felt like the Lord gave me so um, I want to share it with you and um, fortunately for me that I have uh, some people in my life that are able to take stuff like this and put it up online so it sounds really good um, so we've got some really big stuff going on here because of the um, coronavirus actually the COVID-19 virus I want to say I'm sorry to Kasaki New York and Lyme Connecticut for naming diseases after them uh, this one's officially called the COVID-19 virus so let's go from there um, and I want to talk about fear uh, fear is a huge topic right now it's uh, certainly has come to the surface um, nobody really talked about it too much before but the fear is like filling this world up it's just amazing how um, how the fear has just come to the surface and it's just huge and when it comes to the Bible it doesn't it's not silent about fear at all there are over 385 scriptures in the Bible that literally mention the word fear itself much less other scriptures that talk about fear that don't have the word fear in it but um, I we could actually cause a uh, you could actually spend a whole semester college semester talking about fear and the subject of fear and so forth and what the Bible says about it but I want to be short and to the point because there's a problem that I feel like we could help each other with and help others with and I think that would be really good so um, I want to be short and uh, but useful this morning but the first thing we got to do is we have to separate fear from reverence and that's one of the problems with the English language is the English language is um, is a little short on words it doesn't use as many words as the Greek and Hebrew language did so there really are two separate words for fear there's actually three of them but two of them are very very similar in the Greek about being afraid of things and taking flight from things but the third one is a word that really means respect or reverence and uh, we're not really talking about that one today so when it, when the Bible says you should have a fear of the Lord it doesn't mean you should take flight and run from him it means you should revere him you should have reverence for him it also means that we um i have reverence for my wood stove if i touch my wood stove i'm going to get burned i have reverence for boiling water uh you know if i'm not careful with boiling water when i'm carrying it to the sink for my pasta i'm really really careful because i have reverence for it i have reverence for standing on the edge of a cliff um when i'm sightseeing so those are things but but fear causes you with you're afraid of your wood stove reverence of your wood stove fear takes you to the point saying well I'm not gonna have a wood stove because I might get burned or I'm not cooking any pasta because I'm afraid of boiling water or I'm not gonna go sightseeing because I'm afraid of cliffs and high places so there's a difference between reverence and fear and we you need to address that because a lot of times people take things of reverence and they put them into fear um, as I just mentioned so what's really wrong here what's really going on here and it's really the thing that really gets to us is the fear of the unknown we have um, most of us are circular thinkers we, we think in a circle and we like what is in that side we're com comfortable with it within that circle I say that um, carefully because even though we're comfortable within our circle we complain about it a lot um, so we're always we're, we're, we're comfortable we don't want to go outside of our circle but we complain about what's in there so that's an interesting uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that happens but most of us have a fear of other places so you know we um, we're just anything outside of where we are we're afraid of it and you say well that's not really true I mean really I mean like I don't mind going to the beach at all I would love to get on an airplane and go to the beach right now well a lot of people are afraid of flying so they're not going to do that and then other people when they get to the beach like well I'm not going to go swimming because there's sharks out there in the water and um, I can't really talk to a lot of the people here in these villages because there's disease going on in the villages and you know the place is dirty I can't drink their water because the water is you know not clean and all that stuff so you see how the fear just kind of creeps right in there and fear has become a major factor in many and not many most of the decisions 
and actions that we take in today's society, even as Christians, as people that believe in God and, uh, and, and say and confess that God is taking care of us, we still make so many of our decisions and what we do based on fear. We choose our cars based on, I'm afraid, you know, this is going to break down, afraid of that. I, I got to go into debt and buy another car because I'm afraid it's going to break down somewhere. We're afraid of relationships, certain relationships that have hurt us in the past. Then we're afraid of getting into more of those relationships. Um, we're afraid of rejection, people rejecting us. We're afraid of public speaking for that reason. Most public speaking is like the number one fear um, in the, it, of people everywhere. We're afraid of going boating. We're afraid of going hiking. You know, we're afraid of doing so many things. And of course, we're afraid of death. Um, and interestingly, when we say that, even people who um, believe in heaven are afraid of dying. So you believe in heaven, but you're afraid of dying, which means you are afraid of anything that's unknown. You don't really know what to expect, so we're afraid of it. It's just very natural for us to do that. That's probably why Jesus said in Matthew 20, verse, uh, chapter 25, verse 34, he said, I have gone and prepared a kingdom for you. I've gone and prepared a kingdom for you. Um, this is really an important thing because he understands that we have a fear of the unknown. He wants us to know up front. I've already got a place ready for you. You don't have to be afraid of it. Obviously, he loves us and he's going to prepare a really nice place for us. Um, but right now, because of the COVID-19 virus, we have all kinds of fears in our society. We don't know what the results of this disease is going to be. We don't know what's going to happen to the money in our society, the jobs and the housing. I mean, all of us are reliant upon other people for certain things. You know, there's a fear of running out of toilet paper, um, all kinds of things that sometimes doesn't really make sense to some of us, but it's there and uh, fear doesn't always make sense, you know. Um, but one thing I really want you to know is that Jesus has given us a vaccine against fear. We don't have a vaccine against the COVID-19, but we have a vaccine against fear. And I want to explain that to you, what it is. He said in Matthew 14 that we are the light of the world. But I question, and when I look around at myself and my family and, and all Christians, and I say, are we? Are we the light of the world if we tremble in fear like everybody else? Isn't there something wrong with that? How can we be a light to other people when we're showing as much fear? I want to look at, take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Philippians 4, verse 7. Paul writes that the peace of God surpasses all comprehension. And it is there to guard our hearts in our mind. I want you to understand what that means. When it says the peace of God surpasses all comprehension, it means that it it's not about logic or facts. I can't explain to you why you should be at peace. I can't give you certain things that, oh, you don't have to worry about this, you don't have to worry about that. There's nothing about logic or facts that's going to make you have real peace, the peace of God. That's the kind of peace the world tries to give. It is not the peace of God. There's nothing that I can say or do to give you peace. I can't explain it. I can't explain the peace of God. All I know is that God's peace is not the world's peace. And it goes way beyond anything that my brain can comprehend. So, the fruits of God's Holy Spirit. This is important. The fruits of God's Holy Spirit are real. His fruits are real. But they are of a power and a source and a quality that's not obtainable anywhere else but from Him. So if we want the real fruits of the Spirit, we want real joy, we want real peace, we have to go to Him for it and Him only. You can't read a book and get it. You can't get it by any other means. God is the only one that can get it. And that's why Paul wrote in Romans 15, 13, he said, may, the, may God fill you with peace and joy by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a power that comes to us. Jesus knew this. He was explaining to his disciples that he's going to go away. Here, there's, Here's the guy that they've been with for three years. And he's, seen, he's seen Jesus heal people and raise from the dead and all these things are going on and now he's explained to them he's going to go away and leave them and of course this is unknown. And it's not what they're become accustomed to and, and love. And it's all, they're, they're trembling in fear. 
But he says to them, when he's explaining this to them, because he knows their heart, I give you peace, not as the world gives. I give you peace, but not as the world gives. Don't let it. He said, don't let fear. It's an amazing thing. He's asking us not to let it come in. It's a choice we have to make. We pray for God to give it to us, and then we guard our hearts. And we don't let it come in. He says in John chapter 16, I'm going to turn to that, John 16 verse 32. John 16 verse 32, he said, Behold, an hour is coming. This is really, really... I'm like, I read this, I'm like, are you kidding? Wow. It says, An hour is coming, and has already come, for you to be scattered, each to his own home. Hello? Isn't that what's going on? Don't leave your house. And to leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. You're not alone. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you've got tribulation, but take per courage, I have overcome the world. And these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. That's what I want. I want that kind of peace. I don't want to try to rely on the world to give me something. Does this mean, think about it, does this mean that nothing bad is ever going to happen? Bad? Depends on your view of what bad is, doesn't it? I, don't, I hate to get, you know, too logical about this, but sometimes we concentrate so much on the bad things that are going on or that what we think is bad that we don't actually see the big picture. And I think it's really important to see that right now. Most of us, if we're having a bad or rough day, like I mentioned before, we envision ourselves getting on American Airlines and heading for a Caribbean beach somewhere to enjoy the sunshine, to have nothing to think about, sipping on something that we enjoy and having the warm sun flood our, our bodies and we've got nothing to do, nothing to worry about and no, no pressure upon us. And we think that's really, really great. And yet, we're afraid to get on the airline called Heaven Airlines to have it take us to a place that Jesus has prepared for us because we've never seen any pictures of it. We can open up a magazine and see pictures of the beach and people sitting on the beach. We say, ah, that looks really good. But because we haven't seen the kingdom that he's prepared for us, we're afraid of it. Think about it. The bottom line is that we are in God's hands. Psalm 23, David Wright, he wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord restores my soul. That's what we need. We need our soul restored and not drained out of us. He makes me, the Lord makes me, lie down in green pastures. He didn't let me loosen it to run around trying to figure out what's going to get me. I'm laying down, I'm at peace, and I'm in a green pasture where I have everything that I need, and I'm being protected. John, who rested on Jesus' shoulder, which is what most of us like to do when we were, with, when we were young with our parents, when we were afraid, we get into their laps, and we lean on their shoulder to seek peace. John, who leaned on Jesus' shoulder, said in 1 John chapter 4, there is no fear in love. No fear in love. If I allow myself to be in his arms, to be in his care, and I pray for it, I'm going to be at peace, and I'm going to have a comfort that can only come from God and from no one else. And it surpasses all comprehension. It's time for us to minister that to ourselves, and it's time for us to reach out to other people. Other people? i got enough problems of my own. Yes, other people. I've interestingly or, or humorously heard this week that there are no atheists in foxholes. And there's people, even people that, that don't want to believe in God or don't believe in God, when it comes down to a place where they're afraid of dying, they reach out and they pray for God. There are no atheists in foxholes. This is a time to reach out to people who are full of fear, who are totally totally ready to flip out. Comfort them with the same comfort that you are going to receive from God now. 
Don't try to logically explain it to them. It can't be explained logically. Don't try to sell it as a cure for the COVID-19 virus. We don't have a cure for the COVID-19 virus, but we do have a vaccination against fear if we pray for it. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon. Bye.